This is the Zinwell Zat 600B. It is an ATSC 3.0 set-top box that plugs directly into your TV with HDMI. It is simply a converter box that tunes ATSC 1.0 and ATSC 3.0 channels. The biggest selling feature is its ability to supposedly play channels laced with DRM without ever connecting the device to the internet. I wanted to test this device with a diverse group of stations, so I ended up testing the Zinwell Zat 600B in South Florida and Western New York, and I had a different experience in both places. This device is available from channelmaster.com for $149. Be sure to use the link in the description below in order to help out the channel. Speaking of Channel Master, I ended up having a hard time receiving this device in the first place. Just a few hours after I placed my order on Channel Master's website, they had shipped my Zinwell Zat 600B using the United States Postal Service. This was on May 22nd. Channel Master used USP ground advantage and a shipment from Chandler, Arizona to Miami, Florida using this shipping method shouldn't take more than a week. Why am I telling you this? Well, I was patiently tracking my package and saw that it had arrived at a local Miami postal facility on May 28th. It had already been about six days, so I was getting ready to do a review during that last week in May. To my surprise, the package's tracking never updated for a few days, with the last tracking saying that it is moving through now network somewhere in Miami. If I bring up the tracking, it still says to this day, and I'm now recording this in July, that the last update was May 30th, and that it's still moving through the USPS network. About a week later, I still hadn't received my Zinwell box, and had a suspicion, since there were no updates for over a week, that my package may have been lost. I contacted Channel Master Support, and the support team couldn't have been nicer. They told me that they were going to send me another with expedited shipping. It turns out that later that day, my original package showed up at my apartment door without any updates from United States Postal Service tracking. Again, I'm recording this in July, and it still doesn't say it's been delivered, so something got really messed up at the post office's end. I immediately contacted Channel Master and told them that I had just received it so I could catch them before they sent out a new one, and thankfully, I caught them in time. I would like to thank Channel Master for their support. It's not their fault that the United States Postal Service had issues. All in all, I ended up receiving my Zinwell Sat 600B about two weeks after after I ordered it. Once I got it, I wanted to test its capabilities playing channels laced with DRM without ever connecting the device to the internet. Currently, there are two ATSC 3.0 lighthouses in Miami. One is WTVJ, which is owned and operated by Comcast. They are broadcasting four channels that are actually being sent over the air, and all four of them have DRM encryption. The other lighthouse, WPLG, is operated by Berkshire Hathaway and is broadcasting five channels. Out of those five channels, two of of them are laced with DRM encryption. In order for this device to work as advertised, it should be able to play back all six of these channels laced with DRM encryption. Unfortunately, this did not happen. One out of the six channels would not play. This channel was WLTV. The channel would display an error message stating it was unable to decrypt the channel. I refused to connect this to the internet as this should be working out of the box without an internet connection. I wrote a post on the AVS forum and with the help of a forum member, I was able to get a hold of an individual from the team at NBC Universal that works with ATSC 3.0. He told me that the issue had been fixed and said that quote, there was a configuration error in the WLTV transmission path that was corrected. Later that day, I was able to confirm that WLTV was indeed working with the Zinwell. You get the Zinwell Zat 600B and one of your ATSC 3.0 channels laced with DRM isn't working, I strongly urge you to politely contact the station. The broadcast industry seems to want to make sure that this device works with their DRM implementations without an internet connection. The industry has been heavily advertising its ability to work, and it doesn't look good for them when a device like this doesn't work. I am currently using the Zenwell Zat 600B. This is the remote that you use. As you can see here, it does have number buttons at the bottom, which is a nice addition in comparison to the ADTH box. Now, again, like I said earlier in the video, I do not have this device connected to the internet, and I've never connected this thing to the internet. In order to change channels, there's two ways to do that in a channel list view. One of them is by clicking the guide button. So if I bring up the guide, the TV channel completely goes away. Now I will say the guide 
is decent looking. This white rectangle section where the channels are just looks a little bit too basic and unpolished. The ADTH box is able to show the channel logos even without an internet connection for some of these channels and there's literally no room here to do that. There is another way to bring up a channel list by simply clicking the center okay button. And this is the one that I prefer because you can watch TV as you're scrolling up and down for channels. It's pretty responsive, pretty snappy. This is an ATSC 1.0 channel. I'll tune into an ATSC 3.0 channel. This is live tuning speed. This does have DRM and there is no internet connection. It's gonna stutter at the beginning. Does take a little bit of time to tune into the channel, but this could just be the configuration that they're currently sending on this uh, channel. But again, this has been working without an internet connection. I know there have been other videos on YouTube of people claiming that in their particular area, it does not work without an internet connection, that they needed a momentary one-time internet connection in order for it to work. For me, that was not the case, except for one channel, WLTV DT. Now it works perfectly fine, and that's because, like I said before, I contacted engineering at the station and they were able to fix it. So it does have this nice signal strength and signal to noise ratio. I love that it's in decibel milliwatts and in dB. This is how I prefer my measurements to be stated to me, not in percentage like a lot of other devices do. But I will say the accuracy of this is not that good and it freaks out a lot. It'll think that something's like super weak, even though it's super strong. And the measurement has not been very good in comparison to the HD Home Run, which has way more accurate uh, signal to noise ratio calculations. And you can bring up the signal strength and SNR information literally just by clicking this little info button on the side. And as you can see, it comes up here along with a whole bunch of other information. Let's do that again. As you can see here, it shows that this channel's next gen TV, 1080p HDR Dolby Audio, channel call sign number, and some more information here. There's supposed to be guide info at the top and it's not showing it. it has been a glitch with the ATSE 3.0 channels that I have noticed. They are sending guide information and it's saying no information. All the other ATSE 1.0 channels all around it have the guide info, but with the ATSC 3.0 channels on WTVJ, it is not. And I can show you with the other lighthouse as well. Let's go to the other lighthouse. As you can see, it is showing it in this preview view down here, but it's not showing anything in the actual guide. It's refusing to show the info in the guide. Now I can go to the ATSC 1.0 variant, as you can see here. Go back to the guide and it comes up, as you can see, you have file football, but shouldn't the same thing come up with the next gen channel? Because I was just tuned into it. And I know for a fact that they are sending guide data over the air. So there's currently a glitch with the actual guide screen and showing the EPG information. And again, if you click into the next gen channel, it will show it down below here and it will even show it up here where it tells you about the channel, but it's not showing this info in the guide. Also, I don't know if you can see and hear this, but uh, this is all rain droplets on my window and there's been like big lightning strikes happening. Uh, not sure if it's something that would be alerted right now, but I will say when going into this, there is no emergency alerting that has been coming up. So I don't know if it's a station issue, but just like the ADTH box, I have yet to see anything under the emergency alert section uh, here with the Zinwell box as well. They do make getting the emergency alerting very easy. All you have to do is click this red triangle with a red exclamation point. And as soon as you press this, it comes up with this screen that says emergency alert. And if there is something, it'll say it here. I just haven't gotten anything yet. Definitely way better compared to the ADTH box where you actually have to go into a tab and spend a couple seconds trying to get it. Also, there is a dedicated broadcast app button. Now, none of these broadcasters are sending broadcast apps without an internet connection. So when I tap app, nothing happens. 
Uh, in fact, let me get out of this, close, I have to click close. If I click the app button, nothing happens. Even though there is a broadcast app, nothing is happening because I don't have an internet connection. Also, if you are being distracted by this little red blinking light up above there from me pressing buttons on the remote, this remote is completely infrared as you can see here. So you can see the camera here, it is completely infrared. Uh, this is not a Bluetooth remote, unlike the ADTH box. So you need this remote to be in close proximity to the Zingwell box. If you're wondering, yes, that's what that big fat circle, that big fat black circle is on the front of the Zingwell box. That's the cutout in order to receive the IR from the remote. Also right next to it is this extremely bright, annoying light. So I don't know why they chose to have this light this bright, but it is shockingly bright. And if you have all the lights off, it's actually kind of distracting. It actually doesn't even look that bad on camera, but it's super distracting if I'm like trying to watch the game. Like all I see in the corner of my eye right now is that bright white light. And I actually saw some people on ABS forums say that they were like putting tape on the light because it was super bright. Okay, as you can see, I'm now in Western New York. What's really cool is when I hovered over WGRZ, the ATSC 1.0 version, it actually tuned into the over-the-air broadcast without me even clicking onto it. And that's what made it get all of the guide information. The device seems to be tuning into that RF channel in the background. Now, obviously what you are looking forward to here is whether or not it can play the channels with DRM without ever connecting it to the internet. So there are two channels with DRM in Western New York. One of them is WGRZ. The other one is WKBW. So let me tap into WGRZ and just show you. This is real time, how long it takes. The other channel is WKBW and I'll confirm with you that it is working without an internet connection. I've never connected this to the internet, so as you can see, it is working. And that is real time how slow it is. And I've noticed that with the channels of DRM, a lot of times it'll take way longer and show that gray screen in between the loading icon and actually displaying the TV picture. Now, the only other problem that I've noticed in particular with ATSC 3.0, well actually there's more than one problem, but right now with everything that's gone on with WUTV, and I've explained this in my video talking about Dolby Atmos, this Zinwell Zat 600B has no idea what Dolby Atmos is apparently, because if you notice, there's supposed to be a little Dolby audio icon right here and it's missing. Standard Dolby stereo is working, but when I bring it back to the English, which is in Dolby Atmos, it does not work at all. And there have been times where I've tapped into an ATSC 3 channel and it'll just sit there and spin and spin and spin and nothing will happen. There's been times where I've been watching TV and all of a sudden the box will just shut off randomly. So unfortunately, this is where we're at. I would recommend this if you're an early adopter and you want to have a device that can support DRM channels without an internet connection. It is baked, but not as baked as I would have liked it to be. And the HD Home Run Flex 4K is just so much more optimized in comparison. In a future video, I'll be showing you the Run 3 TV options that some of these channels here in Buffalo have. But for now, this pretty much wraps up my review. Thank you very much for watching. Tell me what you think in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. Follow Western New York Over the Air on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at WNY Over the Air. Like Western New York Over the Air on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. Support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash WNY Over the Air. And check out WNYOverTheAir.com for live band scans, cord cutting tips, and much more.